Hey everyone, Tim Streifler here with Divi Life, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create some really cool looking full width drop down menus in Divi with some really great looking icons as well. So, uh, if you've been using Divi for a while and you've looked at a lot of different sites out there for inspiration, different examples of, of different Divi websites, a lot of times while the website itself is highly customized, the drop down menus all look the same and so so many Divi websites have the same drop-down menus because there's not a, a built-in way to really customize them at all and so in this tutorial I'm going to show you a great way to have a little more unique drop-down menus um, stand out a little bit and uh, have some icons in there as well so this is exactly what we'll be creating in the tutorial and kind of the story behind this tutorial is I created a website um, I built this website that you see here, MendocinoFarms.com, and I created uh, some unique things in, in different ways, and I, I got a lot of questions from people how I did certain things. Um, and then about a month ago, the site was featured on the ElegantThemes.com blog for the Divi 100 series, and so I got even more uh, tutorial requests and people asking how I, I did certain things and so I decided I would do a little mini tutorial series on some of the things that I achieved using Divi for this website here um, and so of course the the full width drop down menus is what we're covering today uh, this is part two part one was how I created uh, these animated image hover effects with captions that you see here so if you haven't taken a look at this yet you can um, it's linked in this blog post so you can see uh, how I did this and give you the code so you can use it on your own website. Um, but going back, this is what we're going to be creating today, some full width drop down menus with icons and I'm going to give you some icons as well that you can use on your own site. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to clear the custom CSS code here uh, just for this tutorial. So the first step in this uh, tutorial is to set up the menus and by the way I'm going to be using the blog post as a guide so you can follow along as well if you are watching this video on YouTube the link to the blog post that I have here on my screen is in the uh, the notes the uh, the video notes so you can click on over and and, and get the code here because you're gonna have to be copy and pasting some CSS code so um, the first thing we want to do is set up the menu now if you, you have been using WordPress for some time then you're probably familiar with this process but I'm gonna walk you through very quickly anyways so um, if you don't have a menu set up you want to go to create new menu and then what you're gonna do is you want to make sure that it's assigned to the primary menu so that it shows up in the right spot when we look at it on the front end and then normally what you do is you'd go and uh, grab some of your pages and add them to the um, the menu um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some custom links here uh, just for demonstration purposes but if you had your about page and you were um, or your contact page and, you, and that's what you're going to be putting in the drop down menus and you would add those directly from here just for this demo I'm going to add some custom links just because I don't have those pages set up on my site so I'm going to call this our company and I'm going to add some drop down menus here so I'm going to do our philosophy then I'm gonna do our products except our people then I'm gonna do our products okay and then in order to put these menu items into an actual drop-down menu you just drag them into place here now I'm gonna just show you what we've done so far, kind of track the progress. I'm gonna refresh this. So here's our company. Here's a drop-down menu. Pretty basic. This is a very um, basic drop-down menu that you see on, on most of your websites. So not a whole lot to, to uh, what we're seeing here. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to activate the mega menu. So most people don't even realize that Divi has a built-in mega menu. All you have to do is add the CSS class to the menu and it'll automatically activate the mega menu. Uh, it's pretty cool. So um, in order to activate the mega menu, all you have to do is add the CSS class as I mentioned, but you need to come over here to screen options and make sure that CSS classes are turned on. 
So you want to tick that box there, close the screen options, and now you'll be able to come over here and add Mega Menu. So you can type it in. I also have it in the blog post, so you can copy and paste. It's just Mega slash Menu. Now I'm going to hit Save here. And hopefully I did this right. If I did, these should be horizontal now. Okay, perfect. So the nice thing about the Mega Menu is it takes them from the typical vertical drop down menu and makes them horizontal. So that's the first step is to activate the mega menu. And the point of the mega menu is to have columns. So it keeps things nice and organized. It doesn't have the menu going down. Um, you know, so you have to scroll through the menu. You have it nice and neat and, and uh, into different section columns in, in one menu. Um, but for us, for this case, we're not going to be putting anything in columns, we're only going to have a few menu items, but it allows us to have them horizontally separated instead of vertically. So um, that is the first step. Now, there's still a long ways to go. Um, there's, it's still not perfectly full width. It's also, there's no icons. It just doesn't look that great. Nothing's positioned right. So now what we're going to do is we're, we are going to add the icons. So if you go on over to the post, you can see here that um, I give you a link to download the icons. So if you want to just use the exact icons that, that I'm using just for, for learning purposes, you can just click right here. If you want the entire set of 200 business icons, you click right here. All you have to do is subscribe to my list. I will send those to you immediately, automatically, and uh, you will get um, the link to download the whole set so you can use them on your website. So they'll come in the PNG as well as the Adobe Illustrator file so that you can tweak the colors and make any changes to the icons that you want. So um, you can go ahead and do that if you like or obviously you can use your own images or icons completely up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and download these. I already got them queued up here. So you can see these are the icons we're gonna be using just for this example sake. Again, the 200 icon set has 200 for you to choose from. Um, so there's probably a greater chance it's going to fit uh, what your pages are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a new tab for my media library. I recommend that you do that. And uh, I already have them in here, so I'm not going to re-upload them. But obviously, uh, you would just drag and drop these into your media library. And so before we start copy and pasting the URLs, what we need to do is we need to add a little bit of HTML that's going to let us put the icon where it's supposed to go. And so I already have that HTML formatted for you. So it's right here. Just image source, the file path, and then um, that just goes directly in front of whatever you're calling uh, the, menu, the menu item. So I'm going to go ahead, since I already have those typed out, I'm not going to copy all of this. I'm just going to copy this part here. And I'm going to paste it in front of our philosophy. Now I'm going to go and fix the, the file pass in a second. I'm just going to go and paste this in the right places here. Our people and our products. OK. So um, that's not the right file path. That was just an example file path um, for demonstration purposes. But now I need to actually put the right image in the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this URL here. Uh, this looks like the one for our people. So I'm going to make sure I put this in the right spot here. So that would be our people. So I'm going to take everything. I'm going to copy, or I'm sorry, I'm going to paste over what is in between those parentheses. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> in, in between those quotation marks. So there's the open quote and close quote. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it right in between there. Okay, go back here. Um, we'll do this one here for our philosophy, copy that. Again, pasting what is inside the open and closed quotes. Oops, there we go. One last one here for our products. So let's see, I think this was the one for our products. Copy that and paste it into here in between the open and close quotes. Okay, so that is good. The icons are in there. I'm gonna go ahead and save, and we're just gonna look at and see see what it looks like now. Refresh this page here, and let's see. 
All right, so now we have icons. Uh, we have a menu that is kind of full width, um, has some icons in there. Everything is horizontal, so it's starting to take shape. As you can see, we're not nearly done. We need to add some CSS code into there. So I'm gonna go back to the blog post here. And uh, you can see I have the CSS broken up into a few different sections. Now, if you just wanna get to where the, um, where the demo is and, and have it exactly like the demo without doing each step and kinda of going through the learning process, you can skip ahead and you can just copy and paste everything in the bottom where it's titled Complete CSS. And that's everything you need um, all together. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in steps here and I'm gonna explain kinda of what does what. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this CSS code. Now, um, the place where you put the CSS is going to be inside your Divi theme options. You can also paste this CSS code in the style.css file of your child theme. If you're not using a child theme or you don't know what a child theme is, um, then just disregard that and uh, go ahead and paste it into custom CSS. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. Go ahead and refresh this page. And you can see here, now this is completely full width. So that CSS made it full width. It also removed the um, little arrow um, to make it a drop down. So you can, you can keep that in there if you want um, and just remove that part of the CSS that we just pasted in if you still want that little arrow. Um, but now everything is full width. Um, one thing I'm gonna, uh, pause for a second um, before pasting in the additional CSS. One thing I do want to make clear though is in order to have the menus fully full width like that and have that CSS code work, you need to come over to your uh, theme options and, or I'm sorry, your theme customizer and go to header navigation, primary men menu bar and make sure this is ticked. Make sure that checkbox is checked, make full width and then hit save. Because that is going to, um, that's gonna make it fully full width. It'll look a little funny if your logo and your uh, top level menu items aren't full width, but then your, your uh, drop down menus are. So you want everything to be full width uh, for this uh, tutorial. So um, we're getting close. Everything's full width, but now we need to make it look better. Need to make those icons a lot smaller, line them up, position everything accordingly. Um, and so that's why we're gonna add some additional CSS so this next box here, what this does is this makes the menu items all aligned and gives them a max height and then um, adds a little margin and vertically aligns them. So we're gonna go ahead and paste that after. And by the way, if you've never done this before, the CSS box, it always helps to take that right corner and drag, make it a little larger so you can kind of see what you're doing a little better. Uh, the default size is, is pretty small. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. We're going to refresh this page once again. Take a look at that drop down menu. All right, there we go. Everything is looking a lot better. It's not giant. These icons are appropriate size. They're vertically aligned. They're spaced just right. They're not crammed together. Uh, so everything looks really good. Um, and uh, we still have a little bit to do. Um, that this top borderline right here that you see in blue, this is always a, a dead giveaway that a website is made with Divi. Now, obviously that's not a bad thing uh, if someone knows that a, a website's built in Divi, but I always like to add a little personalization, make it a little more unique so that every site I build doesn't look uh, like the other Divi websites out there. And so uh, by getting rid of this top borderline, whoops, we can, um, we can do that. We can make the website a little more unique. And so, um, that's what we're gonna do next. Let's go ahead and do that. And then also what this little group of CSS code does is it also adds a nice box shadow. See, you'll see that in a second here. Refresh the page. So now there's a nice texture here. So it's not just pure white, there's a little bit of, adds a little bit of character, a little texture. Um, with using that drop shadow. You can remove that if you don't want it. If you just want the classic, you know, plain white, you can do that. Uh, I, I like it, I think it makes it a, a little more, gives a little more depth. Um, alrighty, so going back to the blog post here, we have a couple more things, or yeah, one more thing of CSS to add. And now before I add it, I'm gonna show you why we're adding it. Now, if you notice, 
here, I, you might have noticed I was kind of uh, with the mouse maneuvering in a certain way so that the drop down menu wouldn't shut off on me. And so if you notice, as soon as I take my mouse outside of the area, it disappears. And I have to go all the way back over here and bring it back. So even if I'm going from the top level menu to the drop down menu, if I try to go in a more, in a, just a natural flow with my mouse, a natural mouse movement, it disappears. I have to literally go straight down and then all the way to the side. That is not a good user experience. Visitors are gonna be so frustrated with that, they're just gonna leave the site. You're gonna have a super high bounce rate. Uh, so that's terrible, you don't want that. You want your users to be able to navigate through your site easily without thinking about it. And so what we're gonna to do to fix that is we are going to add a transition delay. And so what that does is it adds a second of time from when you roll off of it until it actually disappears. And so it gives you, it buys you a second of time. So when you're going from here to here, it stays on while you make that little jump. See, if I go fast enough, it'll flicker, but it'll still be on. So, but by doing the transition delay, we're gonna get rid of that flicker altogether. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, copy this last piece of the CSS here, whoops. Copy that into theme options, hit save. Go back to my other tab here, refresh. And now you notice it stays on. So I can, I can change that if I want. I can make it longer, shorter. Um, I think a second is good though, because watch, if I hover over here and I just do a natural mouse movement over to here, it's nice and smooth, there's no flicker. Um, and so I think a second of, of time is good. You can do shorter, you can do longer. One thing I do want to mention though, is you don't want to add too much longer than a second because if you add several menu items like this, so you have our company and then you have our products or, or whatever, if you go from the first one to the second one and then back to the first one and you do that really quick, like you know, you're a user trying to figure out where you want to navigate next to on the site, what it's going to do is it's going to load the first drop down menu and then you move to the second one. The first one stays on and the second one will go on top of it automatically. But when you go back to the third one, you have to wait for the second one to disappear again in order for the first one to go back on top. So it's, it's really confusing. I'm gonna see if I can do this on the Mendocino Farms website here, just going from food to culture back to food. You notice it kind of, it doesn't change right away and they kind of get stacked on top of each other. It's not a very good user experience. Uh, this is actually set to a half a second um, and so I have to really move it it's, um, quick to actually get it to do that, uh, which in most circumstances, most, most users, that's not gonna be a problem. Um, but if you keep this at a second, that's something you just want might wanna be aware of and, and probably shouldn't make it longer than a second. Um, so that's a little piece of advice to fix that user experience issue. And that is everything. So we have now set up full width drop down menus with icons using Divi. And if you want the full set of icons that you see here, uh, don't forget to grab those um, by clicking here and just subscribing to my list. If you wanna get them unsubscribe, that's fine with me, um, but these will be sent to your inbox. Um, and that is everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to write a comment at, at the bottom of this post. If you enjoyed this post and you found it helpful, feel free to share it, social media, in the Divi Facebook groups, uh, wherever. And I uh, thank you for tuning in and we will see you on the next tutorial. Thanks.